This is the Drop the Clutch podcast, a fan-run podcast full of guests, controversy and opinions about the sport we love that sometimes drives us insane. Hey everybody and welcome back to, I think this is episode 23 of Drop the Clutch now. Um, tonight I'm joined with my co-host Nick and our guest this week, uh, Birmingham commercial manager Steve Wollaston. Hi Steve, how are you? Hi Ruth, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. How are you Nick? Yeah, I'm all good. Uh, it's not been well this week, but battling through. Fair enough. Nice to meet you, Nick. And you, Steve. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so we'll just jump into a few questions and <clears> then we'll have just a bit of a general conversation, if that's all right. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. All right. First question I've got is, how did you originally get into watching Speedway? Okay, well, that was thanks to my uncle, who was a mad Wolverhampton fan. Um, he took me to a meeting in 1976 when I obviously I was very young then, um, and a few of my cousins, and in the days of Ollie Olsen, basically. And that was great, but I was a little bit too young to get into it then. So he took me back in about 1980 with another friend of mine. And that was it then, you know, caught hook, line and sinker, home meetings, away meetings. That's when I started getting into it. That's good. So how did you get into the position at Birmingham that you're in now? Well, <laughs> I was going to say, sort of, I don't know, but I do. Um, <laughs> I went to see Lawrence one day last year. Um, on a, I think it was on a Sunday because I'd been to get my season ticket for the previous year, and I went down on a Sunday to do that. And I just popped. Well, first of all, Birmingham's close close to where I live, so I've been taking my daughter quite a number of years since it reopened in two thousand and seven. I did go to the old Perry Bar as well for a couple of seasons. Um, but I was, I was thinking, what can I do? Because obviously last year was a bit, you know, how are things going? Are things going to carry on? There was a little bit of that last year, wasn't there? And I just basically went and saw Lawrence and I said, you know, I'm available to do bits and bobs, such as leaflet drop, those kind of things, really. So just very basic stuff. And... I got talking to for a while because we've got a lot of um, lot of things, I guess, in common and lots of people who we both know. And so it was quite entertaining to listen to back to some of the stories. It grew from that. So the role sort of expanded from that. I got to meet um, Nigel. So Nigel listened to some of the ideas that I got. They potentially getting more people in and getting more sponsorship. And it just grew from that. So it wasn't a plan. <laughs> it was just, how can I help out to start off with? And, you know, it went from there. And it's, it's sort of gone off in a lot of different directions from that, which has been great fun. So your role That's effectively good. is advertising manager for Bellevue. Yeah. Yeah, so to a Birmingham. Yeah. <laughs> you just give me another job. I'm going to write this guy. Well, I think Haley um, brought you up. <laughs> what do you know that I don't? What's wrong with that? Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah. So, I do. I've, I've tried to get this year um, a lot more interest in people advertising with us, mm -hmm. eat sponsorships. Um, just getting new companies on board and, you know, still retaining the, you know, the loyal companies as well who've been with us a few years, who know Lawrence very well. So Lawrence has obviously got the contacts there. But I've done a lot of, you know, calling around the local area. Yeah. So for a lot of face-to-face -face stuff, really, to try and yeah, get people Lawrence interested. Is step Pardon? back hasn't he lawrence has just stepped back recently due to health issues well with lawrence he's got lawrence works eight days a week you know, it's, oh, know. Um, he's like james Pearson's personal chauffeur isn't he at 
there's lots of things there's lots of things that lawrence does so his job description is probably we won't have time for that um yeah. so really my role was to support and yeah. to sort of move over onto those kind of areas to try and get new people interested um and that's been difficult but it's also been great fun as well because it's amazing how many places you go to and you say who you are and what you do and they say oh speedway ah oh, speedway yes i used to go to speedway is that still going <laughs> yeah yeah Jeez, where oh yeah i'm seeing that for ages um i'm still hearing that about bellevue yeah are, are bellevue still going no we've yeah. got a nice beautiful brand new multi-million pound stadium that noise you hear every monday night yeah it's it's just so so really it's been a case of networking getting to know different organizations and one thing has led to another so this year we've we've got a pretty full program of advertisers and we've also got all of the sponsored um you know which is good but really it's it's still trying to spread the word and get more people interested in that and we had another sponsor come on board the other day and it was quite interesting because we're thinking well how are we going to get in the program you know <laughs> so we're, we're thinking leaflet from the leaflet in there and as it happened it managed to fall into place and we were able to rejig and do that and that's a full page advert now that's gone in our program from a brilliant well yeah and i think the story behind that one's quite interesting to bring it sort of up to date from that one because we were looking at how to advertise and what new things we could do and we've got a commercial at birmingham speedway address and one day this this organization got in touch and said have you thought about advertising on the back of buses i've heard all about this yeah yeah so, yeah well it was it's these things happen by chance sometimes so i looked into it and we had a discussion you know sort of with lawrence and i think it was nigel on this one and we thought that's not a bad idea let's let's see what it's like and let's give it a go and um i think it's worked because we have had feedback from people who are either coming back to us or new to us who've said saw your advert on the back of the bus that's fantastic and the and buses as you can well know go everywhere and all that's day, right, day yeah and that's right they're that sort of in out to the bus state depot and they in and out of birmingham and yeah. you know so that one's that's worked well and um that's sort of where we got into that company and they started advertising with us because they want a bigger presence in birmingham that's, that one? Out, it, you know? that's the one that's it it's called it's hard to say because it's it's do media that's called or d-o-o-h media they're the ones that's not the program, it's on the bed. yeah you know yeah, i know that's fantastic though that you've managed to work out a deal and yeah you started yeah. To all due to the advertising campaign would you say yeah that's how it's all transpired you know and i think a lot of it's speaking as well because one i don't think emails blanketing emails that do work that well because no, organizations it might go into spam anyway yeah you know so it's mainly phone going out to see people and you know we've got other ideas actually from this company that we, we're thinking about at the moment and that will be advertising in the city center so for the ball ring so we're working on that one at the minute if it comes off it'll be great but obviously with everything cost and cost benefit mm. yeah. and so you know that's that's where we're at with that company at the minute so it's uh it's interesting to see what will happen with that one that's yeah good. no that's, that's say that's a fantastic idea though using something as big and present as a bus as a yeah. billboard yeah basically yeah that's what it is you've seen these well-man adverts on the back you see movie adverts yeah 
necessarily around Birmingham, but in Manchester, there's buses that are like bright pink for very catalogue. And yes. Yeah, we've yeah, got a couple of buses that are just decked out in advertisers. There's yeah. one for that ITV streaming service that yeah. goes past my office from time to time, and I was like, well, that's bright. Yeah, and that's it. Fairy lights in around the thing. Mm. We've got one of them around here as well. It goes by. It's clever, isn't it? What they do. Yeah, what a fantastic idea. But as you say, you're stuck in a traffic jam, you've got a big speedway rider in your face yes. on the back of a bus. And the other thing, we ran a competition and, you know, people send in pictures when they'd mm -hmm. seen this. You know, I don't oh. mean like standing, don't stand in the road on a you know main, main, major road and take a picture. Do don't take a picture way. whilst you're driving. That's it. You see it's spot up at the lights and your car is stationary and safe. Snap a shot and tell us where you were. Well, it's funny because people who entered right across section of people, um, and you know, I've got people like you know, Ryan Guest saying, I saw one, um, and then I think, um. Darren uh, Thompson got in touch, you know, with Joe and Dan's dad. Same one and sent a picture in. Um, Little P sent one in. James Pearson sent one in. Same one. People nice. from Radio WM. Same one. <laughs> so and yeah, I haven't, and I work in Birmingham twice a week. I know, you need to see one. I think, funnily enough, it was for a time period, not like sort of all year, but. They're still on some of the buses, which is cool. That's so, cool. They've not changed them up yet. They're just on. Yeah. So that's that's worked well, that has. No, that, that's fantastic. I'm glad that you found a system that's like got you a bit more footfall through the gates at Perry Bar because obviously yeah. as we know, money makes the world go round and without it, you can't hire yeah. riders and staff and put that's meetings fine. on full spot. It's, uh, there's a lot of work still to do, mm -hmm. and that's that's what we need to target. You know, that's our biggest thing: people through the doors. So, yeah. but we've we've got a winning home team mm -hmm. in the league now. We've gone from bottom to a playoff spot in the space of 24 hours, which is good. Yeah, that, that can happen though, can't it? That's it. All it takes is one decent result, and you shoot up the table. Yeah. Yeah. Was it me or was the crowd up as well last night? It felt it. I'm not, I haven't heard the figures, but the mm. last two meetings of better crowds than the rest of the season so far. Mm. So, you know, we need to build on that. And I think winning your home meetings is key, isn't it? And getting the, five of them left now, so get the word around, you know. Win the rest of them, that'd be good. And maybe pick up some points on the road, like the bonus points and stuff, that'd be ideal. Yeah. And I think that's it, isn't it? You know, it's, yeah. we can get advertisers, we can get sponsors, but it's a, it's easier if your team's shown some success on the track. So I'm hoping now it's going to be like a further boost. The more we can win now, the more I think people will try to come on board. And if you think of fans, I mean, we I've watched teams who barely would have met in all season in the past, but you stay loyal because you love Speedway. Yeah. You know, yeah. but other people might be having to choose, you know, especially during the cost of living crisis, what they can and can't do. And it might be, do we stay in, do we, or do we go and support our team? If you think there's going to be a successful team and a result, it's do you want to go and watch Birmingham get slapped for want of a phrase, mm. or <laughs> go a little bit further down the road to go and see Wolves win at one more? Well, yeah, it could be as simple as that, couldn't it? Really, mm. you've got two really big teams within yeah. miles of each other, realistically, haven't you? Yeah. So yeah. Well, yeah, it's literally only a pound difference in admission as well because it's twenty at Birmingham and it's only tw mm. it's only twenty one at Wolves. Well, that as well though, but it's again sorry for saying it, but do you want to see Birmingham get slapped or would you rather go and see a team win? No, well, it's all right. Well, it's being honest. Well, you know, it's an obvious thing, isn't it? That you you keep your loyal fan base. 
Mm-hmm. But what we want to do is to expand the fan base. Yeah, we want to give the entertainment and, you know, the results to some extent, yeah, and show we're competitive. And I think a massive thing that I would like to say is that it's very much like a family affair at Birmingham. It's got that feeling, mm. you, you know, right the way throughout the club, you know, all the way throughout the club, I would say. And that's what encourages people to do things. There's a hell of a lot of volunteers at Birmingham. Yeah. And no, myself included, but many, many others. Um, you know, and we've got brilliant sort of team who do the jobs behind the scenes on a Sunday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah. Um, everyone's got their own column in the program which is fantastic and fully deserved because there's so much work that goes on there wouldn't be any speedway without the volunteers mm. well this is it it's the same at any track isn't it it is it is and you know you know those you people that come in with the red flags they yeah. don't get paid for that, for that three hours of an evening no. the guy that drives the track around to break the track or water it he's not really getting paid is he well, it, it's it's that kind of, you know, working together. And it's so much easier getting those sheets off on a Wednesday night when you've won a meeting, I'll tell you. Last night, I think we, we got home the quickest that we've done. Well, Pete said, Pete Clark, sort of the, um, he's the one who coordinates the volunteers. And he said it's the quickest he's managed to get home in two years because we're like, we've got that extra in our step after the, the meeting, after we'd won it. You know, I can imagine. but it comes from the step. top. It does come from the top. That's how you feel being there. It's like you know that you feel valued for actually being part of the club. I must admit, there was an actual genuine buzz round after the meeting last night. Everybody was happy. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> Something we haven't felt for a while. And and the other thing, Ruth, I don't know if you noticed, but there's there's been a lot of talk about rider engagement. A lot through mm-hmm. Andy at the Sports Club and other people. And, you know, it's, um, I think it's really important that if a rider wins a race, they come round and acknowledge the crowd. Yeah. Because yeah. the crowd are up, they're really excited, they want to cheer somebody on. Um, I don't care what league you're on, if that rider wins, they should do a lap of honour, even if they just ride yeah. and do yeah. that at the crowd. Well, they got the chequered flags out again, so they were bringing those round. And also, um, at the end of the meeting, coming over to speak to the fans and being interviewed, you know, it's, I think that was great because it was a feel-good atmosphere last night. I think when somebody needs to be stood at the pit gate going, get out, go, 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 and get a lap of honouring because you just won a race and it's a big deal for the fans. Go get your backside around it. Let it take you about a minute. It was happening last night. I think most of them did it. I think um, I think Troy was probably too tired to do it, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, that's that's it, isn't it? It's family entertainment at the end of the day. Yeah, you need your characters like Matty Zagar on the back wheel, both feet out in the air ring. Yeah, the showman. You say. Rider engagement, Sam Hagen was out on the centre green with the kids club last night doing the egg and spoon race on the middle. Brilliant. Oh, wow. And this is it, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Oh, you be isn't careful with him, by the way. <laughs> you be careful with my Sammy Hagen. <laughs> he, he didn't score, but he was on it. Yeah. Joe. First night in the Brummies race jacket, yeah. though. First night at Perry Bar, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's such a daunting thing. Can you imagine to, you know, your first team place really in the championship and, you know, he, he was competitive. as well. Yeah. He's guesting tonight, you know, uh, for Peterborough, I think. Yeah. Who is it? Sam yeah, Hagen. Oh, really? I think so. Yeah. Oh, wow. But, yeah, it's, you know, the fact that you had your reshuffle at Birmingham, Pearson yeah. was out, and then Sam Hagen came in, I said to Ruth in our yeah. little chat, I went, Oi, you look after him. Mm. It's, this is the thing with speed, right? It can be, it can be really, um, I don't know, it, it's, they say a numbers game, but it's people, isn't it? 
but it can be quite ruthless as well, can't it? It because can be, and you feel, you feel for riders. Yeah, now, James, James has been with us a while now. Well, it's his second, was his second season with you, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. He was improving week by week, plodding on, scoring, 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 and next thing you know. Was his you know. assist average that went against him? Yeah. yeah. Which is another issue completely, isn't it? Yeah, that's his stupid system, that is. Because it's like this new rider that Peterborough signed, is it Vadim Tarasenko? Yeah. He's only on a five-point average, whereas you've got Laguta and Emil have come in and they're on eight-point averages, so shouldn't yeah. he be the same? Yeah. Well, it's always the same for every rider, isn't it? You know, you have two minutes at the start of every race, yeah? That's what they say. And... You know, when you think about it, all of those riders have got their family, they've got their, you know, the investments that they've made, what they've done. And you you move away from them being real people, don't you, sometimes? And I think that's when it does become a numbers game. Uh, Mm -hmm. The averages are sometimes weird to work out, aren't they? Excuse no. my weird facial expression, but Dan Thompson's won Heat 2. Oh, for Ipswich? Yes. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> it's all about confidence. Hey, it's all about confidence. Yeah, definitely. You know. So Sam's had one ride and he hasn't scored anything. I'm just looking at updates. But it's his, it's his first Premiership meeting, so... I was just going to say, though, He's literally gone from National League with the Colts to yeah, all of a sudden yeah. in the championship. And then the next night, he's riding in the Prem. Oh, no. That's, yeah. It's, it's building you know, experience up. Yeah. If he doesn't score, he doesn't score. No. At least he's got a feather in his cap, is it, they say? Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, it is. He's being recognised. Like somebody put, that, put their faith in me to ride for their team for the night in the top league. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, there's a lot of positives to take out of last night and, um, you know, it just makes you feel, I don't know, woke up feeling the same way. It's weird, isn't it? Mm. It's good, though, I haven't because, felt it yeah. for a while, that's why. <laughs> you what know. did I say, though? Is it the tide turning for Birmingham? be interesting how they get on, or how we get on, I should say, um, yeah. on Friday. At, at Teddy Brown. Oh, yeah. You've got the monarchs, mm. yeah, yeah, so it'd be nice to go and beat them by the same margin they beat us at Perry Bar. I won't lie. Well, it's it's a proper test, isn't it? See, that would cause a super heat, then wouldn't it? For the aggregate point, oh, could you imagine that? Oh, don't remind me of super heats when I went to watch Walls at Bellevue. <laughs> that was a good match, that was. I enjoyed that, <laughs> yeah, it was a good match. Uh, well, Ruth and I were discussing earlier about the Premiership pairs and who we'd put forward. And yeah. I said for Bellevue, I'd go with Brady and J Mo. Mm. It's interesting. J-Mo. Yeah. J-Mo was already there, isn't he? Yeah. But Lomo's Aussie Army, for me. Yeah. So they're saying that uh, Lizzie's going to take that number one off Dan Bewley by the end of the month. It's interesting, that is. Because he's gone a storm this se- this month, hasn't he? Yeah. Considering he was reserve at one point as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we're trying to look at some um, other things as well, um, going out and trying to spread the word. So, been a few events. Um, the main one that we went to was a cycle speedway championship at the weekend. That was over in. Uh, Birmingham and they were great. Yeah, fantastic setup over there. Lovely little track. A bike in the van with the uh, table and the set out for. That's the one, yeah, you've seen it. Yeah, it was great because we've got people. Other clubs do the same at like yeah. the Manchester State and stuff. Yeah, and I think, you know, we've looked at um, going out to schools as well. So I've got a list of schools who've agreed to to have us. So, 
you know, it's really a case of coordinating that and finding a rider who's available to come. Yeah, because that's then, a difficulty, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, been quite fortunate in that Tom Bacon, a former rider for us, he, he's got leathers and things like that, helmets, which he could provide for us, which is lovely, um, which is one side of it, but it would be great to get a rider down there as well, because... I'm sure with the bike, you know, that kind of thing, you wouldn't forget, would you, if somebody came? No, of course, if you've got Sam Hagen, say, for example, with his yeah. bike, it's yeah. very young. Yeah. His so, cars and, everything. and he lets you sit on the bike and rev it and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So we that's had, the kind of thing. Yeah. We had Tom on a couple of weeks back. And, yeah. Uh, he mentioned a time that when he was at school and the Coventry Blaze went to his school and he got to try yeah. on the kit and stuff. Yeah. Well, can you imagine if you did something like that with Speedway? It'd go, it'd yeah. really, it'd go Mom, Dad, I want to go to Speedway. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know. Something like that last year or the year before. Mm. Yeah. It was on He went back to the school and was popping wheelies up and down the field. and Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Showing off the equipment and the bike and stuff like you were just yeah. talking about. Yeah, so so that's one thing that we'll be doing in the next few weeks before the kids break up for summer holidays to encourage them to come. Um, we've actually got the under nine. Well, th this will go out after the under nineteens, but you know we're trying schemes for different things, um, different promotions, different magazines advertising in those and yeah. leaflets. We, we're just giving it what we can to try and show that we do you know we do care about people coming and to let our current fans know that we're not just you know there's nothing going on behind the scenes there's plenty and um, things happening and you know ultimately though the daftest thing about all of this is if you bring a friend to speedway with you and everybody does that you're doubling the crowd mm. instantly yeah you know that's, that's, and then who's the next week they won't bring a friend, so that's tripled it from the week before. It's yeah, it's I know it's, it's not rocket science, is it? You think of it that way. Yeah. So you know I mean, that's trying to introduce my son to it. Um, yeah. but he was about six at the time. So yeah. wasn't into the noise and the chaos, but now he's yeah. got a bit older, I'm gonna try and bring him back again. Yeah. I spoke to CVS last year because I was trying to get some ideas about this as well from somebody else. Name dropping there. Um, but he was saying that one night at Speedway, there was a, a group of lads outside and not causing any trouble, but they were just having a look. To, and he, he he went over to them and said, come in. Come and have a look. See where it is. You know, because he understood the fact that you know, if you can grab somebody's attention and they come and see it, what it, what it, they might be back. They might be back with their mates. They might do this and that, you know. So it's that kind of thing, isn't it? It's getting people to actually be there and see what it's like. That's kind of how I got into Speedway. Because mm. I used to live across the road from Curtin Hume Lane. Yeah. So I've been hearing it for a long time and like, oh, what's that? I might go and check that out one day. And then the World Cup in 2016, somebody gave me a ticket, just a random person. I said, do you want to park outside my house? I've got a parking permit. Brilliant. I don't own a car. In exchange, they gave me a ticket to the World Cup on the Sunday. I went, and I've not looked back since. There you go. So it's basically the same story, isn't it? Yeah, but it is. It's like, yeah, brilliant. I think they call it the yeah. tomato principle, you know. Yeah. You get one tomato, it's one tomato, two tomatoes, four tomatoes, and so on. And then you've, uh, you know. Yeah, definitely. But it, you know, that day kind of changed my life in the fact that I found a new sport and I was like, wow. What hit you then mainly about going? What was the thing that got you, Nick? I think it was the atmosphere. Obviously, as I say, with it being the World Cup, we had the big extra stand at Bellevue. The stadium was sardined. Yeah. And it was just 
the racing, it's like nothing you've ever seen before if you've never seen it. It's four lunatics on rockets. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> with a cigarette paper between the handlebars and the yeah. bodies. That's no. the best way to describe it. I know others say no brakes, no fear, and all this, but yeah, it's balloons on rockets. Yeah, yeah, I oh, know. Yeah. I've, I've got two words as to how I got into watching Birmingham, and he's a Bellevue legend as well. Jason Lyons, okay. But how did you get to know about Jason? My dad, well, here's a story for you. I think I might have been, I was about seven at the time. I might have been playing out in the back garden and I'd come in and my mum and dad were chatting. And my dad's like, there's an air of excitement in the kitchen. And my dad's like, the promies are coming back. And I was like, me being seven and like just being generally nosy, I was like, what's that? And my dad's like, Speedway's coming back to Birmingham. And I was like, oh, and my dad took me back since. I'm now 23, so mm. 16 years I've been watching Birmingham. Yeah, it's it's amazing because you know that's the that's the kind of thing, isn't it? Once you get hooked, yeah, you stay hooked. Definitely, and it's like no two meetings are the same racing wise. No. No. Yeah. I've been watching Bellevue a bit more as well to keep the other side of my family happy as they're not in the same league. Yeah. Well, then. Well, that's, that's on you, though, isn't it? You know, if you want to support yeah. the Aces in the Premiership and the Brummies in the Championship and the Fen Tigers in the Development League, then mm. so be it. Yeah. You know, just to throw three randoms out there. Yeah. With Speedway <laughs> fans. Exactly, yeah. it's for the love of the sport. You, love, you love the sport full stop, and you happen to have family from the Manchester area, so you're obviously going to look out for yeah. Bellevue. And you're That's on the doorstep it. of Birmingham, so it's yeah. And and I think now yeah, it's a good example at um, Birmingham about Paul, one of the director, Paul Lunsden, and he's from Reading, so he's a massive Reading Speedway fan. Yeah. So you know. That's where he comes from. So he loved Reading, but Reading, unfortunately, are no more. Yeah, but yeah, I think it's apart for the football ground, isn't it? Now, I think so. I think so. I'm not sure, but he, you know, he's he's come over onto the consortium that saved the club, and it's Lawrence instigated, and um, you know, he's he's got brilliant ideas for Birmingham as well. You know, you you, you sort of. You know, you sort of grow into some places and it becomes your main focus. But we're all, we've all got our clubs and our teams, but at the end of the day, we're all Speedway fans as yeah. a whole. Yeah. It's yeah, interesting. Yeah, it is interesting, I'm people's ideas. And Norwegian and French and whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Somebody was at Birmingham in a Peterborough shirt last night. It's amazing, you know, because I was on the car park last night with uh, Boz, another director, Boz Smith, mm -hmm. and you, you'd be amazed how many different, you know, different clubs are coming. Yeah. So people, somebody walked in with a Leicester cap on. Um, that's a great, you know, you're right, Ruth. People come from all over the country. On Monday for the ACES meeting, I was doing uh, bag checks for security. Yeah. And coming past me, I saw Glasgow gear. Yeah. Red car gear. Yeah. Uh, Bellevue, obviously. I'm sure I saw a Birmingham hat or yeah. two, maybe. You know, um, there was a few Polish teams. Like yeah. I saw Russell as well, and I saw Lubin and Lesno. Wow! Obviously you get the poles. The poles yeah, just yeah. go wherever to watch Speedway, won't they? But yes, it's like, I know um, Charles and Jake are at Red Car, aren't they? Mm. 
yeah. Tom's at Glasgow. Yeah. So I understand the connections there straight away. Birmingham, we had James, we've now got Sam. Yeah. So obviously there's a connection there. That's right. But people just go and wear whatever they've got. Yeah. Like if I was ever to come down to Birmingham, I'd wear my Aces stuff. Yeah. Because it's all I've got. Yeah. And I might walk away with Birmingham merch. I might not. It's. it's Pack shop there. needs to be stocked first. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've got a Wolves cap and a Birmingham cap in my boot, and a neutral one. So you can you can get yeah. mixed up sometimes with what you wear. <laughs> I've got Ty Wolfenden, Greg Ancott, Tom Brennan, Connor Bailey, two Robert Lambert, an old Grand Prix one, and I've got a Dan Bewley one as well. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure I've got a Jason Doyle one somewhere. Yeah, I've well, got a Ty Wolfenden monster hat. Oh yeah, the one you yeah, the one you yeah, you, have. you have. He gave yeah. it to me uh, before the Peter Craven last year. Oh, oh yeah, Nick's famous. He's on Wolfie's first vlog from the beginning of last season. Oh, Nick, That's he brilliant. Came to my house. We had a monster, and he went, "Oh, your hat's looking a bit worn. Have a freshie," and gave me this. Oh, fantastic. He hasn't taken it off since. That's what you don't get in other sports, you see. Yeah. You don't I don't know if you get it, you know, to anywhere near the extent that you do with Speedway. No, because I said just messing around. Oh, fancy coming around for a brew before the craving. He was yeah. like, Oh, where'd you live? So I told him and he went, Well saw it. Wow. And that's mad. He came in. That's that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Good grief! I might have me. I might have my Vans hat on tonight, but there you go. Oh, look, see. My brummies and my GB badge on there. Yeah. I need a Bellevue Aces badge for this hat. Nah, Pack shop next time you up. <laughs> I've got my hockey ones on that side as well. Yeah. But you can't wear hockey and speedway merch at the same time, Bruce. Don't you know? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, like that plank at work that told me at work. A few weeks oh, ago, I walked into work wearing a speedway cap and one of my ice hockey hoodies, and somebody said, oh, you can't do that. And I was like, oh, well, I do it all the time. What's it to you? That's pants, isn't it, that? I mean, why can't you have different, you know? Exactly. I said it's like me wearing my football shirts and wearing my NGK hat or my monster yeah. hat. So be it. You yeah, tell exactly. me how. It's right. You know, I think one of the big things looking forward in sport, like, you know, what we love it, is more national kind of advertising. Because mm -hmm. I've never seen Speedway advertised on the telly. You know, okay, if it's an event, they might be advertised on whatever channel is going to show it. But yeah, like the have you ever seen it on the mainstream? The Grand no. Prix are advertised on the Discovery Plus yeah. like involved shows because I've seen an advert for the Grand Prix on Food Network of all channels. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's the Discovery Channel still though, isn't it? It's under yeah. that umbrella. Yeah, but if you think about Speedway in general, coming to a meeting, what impact would it have if there was an advert run? I mean, it's not cheap, is it, obviously? But an advert campaign on, you know, on ITV, for instance. Yeah, Nigel said that on another podcast, which I'm not going to mention. Oh, did he? <laughs> was right He's pinching my ideas again. I'll tell him that. It was um, Nigel and the gent that stepped in. Yeah. Is it Stuart? Yeah. Yeah, it was Nigel and Stuart were on this other podcast and they were saying how we've done this, that and the other to advertise Birmingham, but you didn't, wouldn't it be lovely to spend the money and get a TV advert, even if yeah. it was just what? Was it the official one? It featured all the clubs or the championship and it featured all the clubs. Absolutely right, yeah, yeah. And now everybody yeah, pulled we, together. Mm. Well, yeah, if everyone put £10,000 in a pot, you'd end up with... 
a hundred thousand pounds per league, say, yeah. for advertising. Well, and if if you see teams that have got the team sponsors on their kits and everything, you're exposing mm -hmm. that sponsor as well. So you mm -hmm. might even get something from that. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's it's something that I've not seen, and I'd love to see it. You know, I will as well. Because I've seen things advertised in the Metro newspaper. Yeah. But it's only for when Cardiff's coming up or yeah. Speedway Nations or World Cup when yeah. Manchester have them. Or um, the Junior Championships. Because mm. Birmingham had the Under the 20. World Cup. Uh, the Under 21 World Cup or something. We had no. the under twenty one final last year. Last year we had the under twenty one final oh. that Leon won. And this year we've got the under nineteens. Nice. Which again is great. And we also a few weeks back we had the British Youth Championships, which was fantastic. Yeah. Nick, the podcast is a heat sponsor. Did I not tell you? Oh yeah. <laughs> Did I not tell yeah. you? I thought I told you. Me on about. Yeah. Yeah, no, we've got heat seven, seven on. Yeah. Yeah, you've got a heat sponsor. And I was like, yeah, that's fantastic. That's just what we need, just that yeah. little bit more. Because yeah. we were looking at doing one of the other events as well, weren't we? You were thinking of methanol last night. I was. That's because yeah. that's only a tenner, so I could whack yeah. 20 quid as well. Yeah, what, that would be uh, very welcome. Fuel. Yeah, sponsoring the riders' fuel for the night. Yeah. Yeah, for two riders. So you, is it, we've got a few. We've got all the eats for sponsored now. So mm -hmm. they've all been done. Uh, we've got a couple of riders still to, you know, complete the rider sponsorship. And then the final thing is each rider has a methanol sponsor for a tenner. And we've got a few of those left. Um, but you know, I'll send the list over Ruth of the riders who've oh, not got the methanol sponsorships and if you choose yeah, right. whichever two riders you want i just had a little brainwave then mm -hmm. and mr hayden you know if we're going in hearts each on the sponsorship it works out both because he's a colt and a brummy uh, yeah that's true i'll have a little look i'll see uh yeah. you know see what's left I'll send it over to you you can have yeah, a look at that my little crazy brain there it's like Helping yeah. out a whole, even though he's a brummy. Yeah, mm. have a look. See if he's taken or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, yes. I must admit, I was that happy last night. My race card fell out. Oh, wow. Do you know what? It's all ripped. It's all ripped. Like, oh, did you throw it, up in, throw it up in the air, did you? Um. I've got a clipboard, you see. So the way I have my program is, I turn it that way. Okay. So the race card's like that. Yeah. And I must have just been clapping so much that it just sort of ripped away. Ah. Uh, well. I need to get a new board, to be honest. Nick, we had the mayor there last night. We did. Oh, we had wow. the mayor of the West Midlands there last yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, and um, he was with um, Brian Book. And also with Joe Tolly, and apparently he filled his programming. Oh, nice! Did he really, enjoy it then? Yeah, yeah, he got oh, really, in, really into it. That's good so news. That he is. goes back in the office and tells some more of his like, peers and friends and whatever. Yeah, he's on Wolf's side quite a bit. So if we can get him on our side as well, that'd be very, very ideal. Very much so with what goes on, you know, behind the scenes. I think it's essential that, uh, mm. you know, we, we have a lot of people batting for us. Definitely, you know, obviously. Yeah, we've we got a politician or two on our side. Yeah. Yeah, we all have a situation with Wolves potentially not having a stadium. Yeah, well, I think everybody needs to, you know, think about, you know, what will help them and yeah, have exactly. those things things in place if they can so yeah apparently he was he was really into it 
Yeah. And hopefully some work goes through with this meeting that Nigel's got with the ground people. Yeah, we're waiting on that, aren't we now? Mm. So what the yeah, outcome is. That was mentioned because Fridays are the only realistic night other than a Monday. Yeah. Which would be going up to the prem, wouldn't it? It would. Um, but then again, it would depend on Wolverhampton again, wouldn't it? Because they're Monday. So right. I couldn't see all crowd split and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but there are, you know, that never say never because, like I said to you before, with people like Nigel, well, everyone involved with it, there's a very strong, you know, bond to keep things going, to look to see what yeah, we can yeah. do. You know, there's, there's not a give up attitude in there at all. So, no, it's definitely it's, my outside a perspective doesn't sound like you're willing to just roll over and no it no no it's just a try and problem solve you know we'll get things done what we can get done for the best of you know the fans i must admit friday nights would be preferable but because then i could get home at whatever time and i wouldn't have to worry about getting up in the yeah. morning <laughs> that's that's where i started you know going back to where we started off with the conversation wolverhampton were fridays then mm. I can always remember um, going back home after a meeting, going past the chip shop, grabbing some fish and chips on the way back home. It was like, wow, you know, amazing. That, uh, might, that might in turn encourage more people to come as well because like, oh, it's the weekend after I don't have to get out of bed so early to get a work yeah. in the morning. Yeah. But then you look at other teams that ride on a Friday night and have a really poor turnout. It's, you could, yeah, it's, it's difficult to to work it out isn't it because yeah. people might already have their friday sorted this is what they do on a friday mm. and that's what they'll continue to do or yeah. like you said drew it's, it's easier for children perhaps if it's on a friday because no school the next day it's difficult isn't it to know how it would fall in whatever area mm. yeah. it's like the colts really struggle on a friday night believe it or not yeah because that's yeah, you'd think there'd be a crowd there. A lot of people like, oh, it's only National League, though, but yeah. when you like, oh, you get people that love the sport and you're like, oh, well, this is the future of the sport, so you should yeah. go and support them now. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like the last one that you were at, um... oh, who was it again, Ruth? It was uh, versus Melbourne a few weeks oh, ago. Yeah, yeah. The Colts versus Mildenhall. It's a Friday night, beautiful evening. Yeah. The grandstand was a third full. Yeah. And that was like people were spread out, so you'd have so many empty seats mm -hmm. rather than. Yeah. And it was just sad to see, to be honest, because the racing was phenomenal. Yeah. Mm. The way James and Alfie were going at it, I was like. <laughs> yeah. Is that a Stop. question, mate? Right? Yeah. And, then that, and then the following meeting when we went up to Mildenhall, James ended up with both feet in the air and his bike halfway down the track, didn't he? Oh. Nothing was as bad as that when he flipped it at Perry Bar and his bike went cartwheeling down the street and he ended up on his bum. Yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. It's, Speedway's getting there again. It just needs that extra kick in the bum. It does. It needs a bit of hump behind it. You know, I, I I just love this idea of the national thing. Let's get a national broadcasting, you know, advertising campaign going. Even if it's a highlight show at mm. eight o'clock on whatever channel. Well, yeah. Eight, three, seven, yeah. Hour and a half show. So you've got half an hour for the Prem, half an hour for the Championship, half an hour for the yeah National yeah just show highlights of each race whatever yeah what people's appetite they're going to see it on telly and go oh oh yeah because i've got a friend that's a massive petrol head mm. and the only reason that's stopping him going to watch speedway is the fact that he'd get obsessed with it oh really he's a bike rider he yeah. loves motors he loves super bikes he loves british yeah. super bikes to the point where He'll go out and he'll buy a bike. Say he buys an R1 
and then he'll buy a Valentino Rossi sticker kit for it. Or if he gets a Kawasaki, he'll go and then turn it into Jonathan Ray's Kawasaki. Yeah. If he gets a Ducati, it'll be uh, Casey Stoner's Ducati. Mm. He's that obsessed by it. Yeah. So yeah. He's one of them that he'd go and watch Speedway, whether it be live or on TV or whatever. He'd go and buy a bike and you're totally obsessed by it. Yeah, Ooh. he's like of that mindset. Yeah. That, that's I've... why we make this podcast, isn't it? Because we love the sport so much. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's a little that's, a, that's our know. tagline. It's yeah. about, this, about the sport we love, but it sometimes drives us insane because it does sometimes drive us insane. Oh, yeah. If you care about something a lot, you can have those, you know, ups and downs with it. Yeah, definitely. You know, and uh, with the Wolverhampton situation, I was there in 1981 when it closed. You know, it, had, it went, 1980 it was top league, then 91 it was the second division. And then it was closed for a couple of years and then reopened. So, and that's the that's the situation with speed, where right? you just don't know what's going to happen next. It's, yeah. You've got to ride, ride the wave almost. If it can get some more backing, like politically and locally and stuff, it might well, like. It needs to be ring, fen ring fenced. It needs to be, um, you know, it's almost like a bit of conservation, isn't it? Mm, definitely. No, it needs the support of that. It needs supporting and it needs advertising better, personally. Yeah. yeah. Individual clubs with their bit, like yourselves with your buses yeah. and yeah. Uh, Bellevue have gone round schools and local youth centres. Yeah. Uh, I believe Tom Brennan went to the hideout last season yeah. with his bike and showed all the kids and then the following Monday, we had a load of the kids there. Yeah, brilliant. Do you know, like you were saying with the schools, that kind of thing. Yeah. That's at our youth centre. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, you know, it's just not as a whole, is it? No, it's not. It's individual it's clubs. Individual clubs doing a bit here, a bit there, a bit yeah. there. Whereas we need an advertising campaign or, as I say, like a highlight show. Yeah. Once a week, like match of the day, but something else obviously yeah raise the profile i think once I've always you get... thought, um a few years back it was a few clubs i think it was swindon pool and another club down south mm. they'd sort of like made an a thing um like a partnership or something where if you turned up at that track with another club season ticket you could get money off admission yeah i know it has happened like in the that. past Club, Maybe yeah. that's something like worth looking into, just like around the country. Just make it a countrywide thing. Say you show up with another team's board or season yeah. ticket or another team's jumper or something, and you go, "Oh, I'm just here to support Speedway." You know, like give them a five or a five mission or something. Because well, sliding scale depending on how big the thing is. If it's just a board, mm. you get two quid off. Mm. If yeah. it's a you get a fiver off if it's a hoodie or a t-shirt you get yeah. three to four quid off there's a lot there's lots of good ideas floating around isn't it, it needs to be joined up nationally yeah exactly that's you know. the thing yeah. it just, in a sense it needs to be nationalized as a sport like the buses mm. and the trains yeah and i think once yep. you get people to come as well it's mm. giving them proper good value and you know, we try to do our best. We've got centre green experiences for people who come. But we've also done something slightly different this year, which is, uh, and this is thanks to Dave Rowe and the referees, the parties have gone up into the ref's box, you know, before the meetings. And so it's, oh, wow. it's different that because, you know, it's an all new, it's, it's just amazing to go into the ref's box, you know. And uh, you can see, they're, they're like excited because the view's fantastic from mm -hmm. one in Perry Bar. And uh, Dave's letting them press the tapes and everything, you know, before the meeting. And so the tapes going off and the red lights coming on. And very <laughs> nice. I've been up there once at Perry Bar. Yeah. But it was to sell 50 50 <laughs> Was it? Did you go yeah. to the ref's box to do that? Wow. Mm. <laughs> 
But it's just, just something sounds... different, you know. Mm. So there's yeah, a, lot yeah. of, a lot of positive. Let people let the power go to the red. Oh, I pressed the tapes button. Well, you never forget it, do you? Yeah, true. You know, I, I pressed the tapes at uh, Speedway meeting. Oh, yeah. how did you get to do that? You know, it like yeah. it gets people to ask questions and stuff. Yeah, and then what Speedway? Tell me about it. Mm. Like me getting to High Wolf and just come around to my house and have a can of monster with him. I will never forget ask. that. It's all to do with asking, isn't it? It's all to do with the communication. That's what I said to you though, Ruth, wasn't it? So mm. I was like, I just to my arm because you were like, How have you done that? I was like, Cheeky, cheeky, cheeky chappy, happy go lucky. Don't ask, you don't get. <laughs> Although we found out with this podcast, haven't we? If you don't ask, you don't get. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, some of the people that we've had on. Or yeah. lined up and then it fell apart. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, back in the winter, Nick asked uh, Monster Joe. Mm. Um, but he sort of dropped us on our ass last minute, which was nice. Yeah, well, but he he said yes all along, and then he was like, "Ah, oh, mm. I've got a meeting that yeah. day with Monster," and obviously yeah. that takes power for us. Yeah, so you, she, you keep trying then? Yeah, I'm maybe it's worth trying again, yeah. You know. But it was, I just chanced my arm one day, I dropped a message on me, Insta. Yeah, yeah. cool, one day I'll that. What, yeah. when? So we, we should go and find him and corner him at Cardiff and ask. Do it at Cardiff. <laughs> get, get, pin, him, pin him at the corner, get your phone ready and just do it. Well, I'm here with Monster Joe. <laughs> yeah, that's the way, isn't it? Or oh, that could be an awesome little short if you get the opportunity to speak to riders or stuff. Yeah. No. Well, yeah, that's what I've been thinking about recently. And uh, if you hang on, we'd go have a chat about it because I've come up with some ideas to sort of refresh mm -hmm. and bring some new stuff in. But I'll, t I'll tell you after. But yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> Not gonna tell him he'll steal our ideas. I'm, I'm not, no, I'm I'm just gonna No, I'm, no. I'm keep delivering the everything research. close to the vest because this supporters club podcast has sort of got, just gone whoop and took us like all out. Yeah. There's room for everybody. We had, had we had two co hosts leave because of it and it took us all out and we have literally just recovered and now we're back on it making episodes. Yeah. But there's room you the more the merrier, I'll be honest with you. Mm. There's, room, there's room for everything in this sport. Not no, many, of course, you know. it's just the way things went down. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Not just feeling deflated and we didn't want to do it for a week or two. And then we were like, no, yeah. do you know what? Sod it. Back on no, the horse. We don't need them. Good for you. you. You've got to do your thing, you know, and it's it's been lovely to be here with you tonight. Yeah, we're grateful for you coming on, you know. Just, just you know, we're trying to... St even stuff like this like tries to improve mm. the profile of the sport because yeah. somebody could just be looking for a new podcast to listen to on Spotify and they go, oh, what's that? Yeah. They listen yeah. to it and, and then, like, oh, where's my local speedway track? You know, stuff yeah. like that. That's what we do. It for. I'd like to try and get track curators on and such. Yeah. Perspectives of the sport, like we've put yourself on, we've had riders yeah. on. Yeah, have a few fans on. It's yeah. like I personally would be really intrigued, or I am intrigued as to what goes into prepping a track for the night. Yeah, well, God, there's loads. So you know, that's a great thought to have. You know, like a diary of how to get ready mm -hmm. for a meeting. Yeah, because I've asked. Um, you could have a Andrew team Hurley. manager on as well. Yeah, yeah, I think I've asked Andy from Bellevue about coming on as track create curator sorry and he said yeah let him know when and if he can yeah. he will well yeah and if, if he's got some videos of what he does you know you could intersperse it with some of that and a few photos and this is you know this is the difficulty i had this week you know this is how i overcame it and you know these the, these are the people who support it by doing various other things while i'm doing this yeah, it's exactly, a big jigsaw puzzle it really is I mean, it's, it's not just one man either, is it? There's five or six team members in yeah. getting a 
everybody. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot, lot behind the scenes that you wouldn't, you know, you, you need to sort of observe it to understand it. It's quite interesting. Yeah, yeah most From definitely. From mechanics perspective. Yeah, every every aspect well, of speedway. Well. Yeah, Mitch Stadium, didn't we? And he's kind of a mechanic, kind of a fan, kind of a rider. Yeah. He's a bit of he's done a bit of everything. Yeah, exactly. So we had him on one of the earlier episodes. Yeah. And Way back on just... episode ten. It was, wow. wasn't it? The first of the video, that's right. Mm. Well, you've done brilliantly. You got your episode twenty three now. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's that's brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah. We've gone from fortnightly to weekly to fortnightly to weekly. Yeah. And it's it depends on commitments as well because my job i can get a message at two o'clock in the afternoon that i'm needed and work that night yeah so yeah that's why we're looking for another sporadic co-host isn't it yeah maybe because this is just an idea that i'll float out but maybe it's a good idea to have a former rider come on there's, there's Ooh, some really there's some really there's some really good communicators i'll tell you one thing that i've found you know and meet the rider nights and things like that mm. how the riders can you know they can put the points across really well mm. how they can engage in that kind of um you know a situation yeah because you know what it's like if you're talking to somebody and they they answer yes no whatever yeah it's difficult isn't it but the the last ride tonight that uh, the meet and greet at uh, goals perry bar everyone articulated really well you know it was it was interesting to listen to the stories yeah so you know i'm sure if that's what the the route you want to take you could certainly find somebody to do it mm. you know. good idea that keep that make a note of that in there but um you can audition them then already wow i've been talking yep. a while <laughs> but uh yes yeah, i think we've got nearly an hour of content actually so that's good that's but, um, yeah i'm gonna have to disappear and put my daughter to bed as well yeah i was gonna i was just i was literally about to say do we want to wrap it up now yeah no i'd like to say a big thank you for inviting me i've enjoyed it it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on steve and hear your story and what you're doing and have done for birmingham speedway no thank you and thank you for what you're doing as well we'll try and do our little bit brilliant i'm grateful that you uh said yes and agreed to come on no problem at all ruth but, okay yeah that thanks everybody that was episode 23 of drop the clutch uh this will either be out on the 23rd or the 30th depending on how quick i can edit the episode but uh see catch you on the next one see you later everybody see you soon. bye you've just finished listening to another episode of the drop the clutch podcast thanks for listening we appreciate the support have a good week and we'll catch you on the next one. Yeah.